Almost immediately after the Second World War, Jaguar began building cars in the same place in Coventry where they used to build Spitfire fighter planes. Over the years, there's been good times and bad times. When the bad times were bad, people still wanted a Jaguar. Just before the Ford bailout, when they only made them in about three different colors, they were still selling cars over the world. Jaguar's always had a knack for building cars that people want, even if there's no way they can own one. And over the years, they've developed a strategy that didn't even have a name back in the old days and something they began to have a really good knack at. That's branding. I hear one more guy talk about badge engineering, I'm gonna lose it. The idea behind it is that you can get the public to buy it as long as you create the right image around it. Well, that's a load of bull. When I was a kid, just becoming a car guy in the early to mid 60s, General Motors knew how to brand. In those days, a Pontiac was a Pontiac. A Chevy was a Chevy. There was fierce brand loyalty. Cadillac was a very strong brand in the 60s. In fact, if you were successful, you were almost obligated to own a Cadillac. What happened in the 1980s? Pontiac unleashes the new 2000 Sunbird Turbo. Chevy Cavaliers became Pontiac Sunfires. And then, inexplicably, they tried to make it into a Cadillac Cimarron. The Smaller Dream, 1984 Cimarron by Cadillac. Well, the Cadillac people, fiercely loyal brand people, rejected it. The rest of the North American public rejected it. Every car guy in the world laughed at it, and it began to erode the integrity of the brand. Somebody at General Motors was messing up big time. Recently, they had to unretire Bob Lutz, who came in, took a look around, and said, you know, we make good cars, better than we ever had. It's our marketing guys who suck. And when Bob Lutz says you're doing a lousy job in marketing, you're doing a lousy job in marketing. The problem is, about seven-eighths of the people that I meet that are responsible for the brands from Detroit are morons. They're highly educated people who came from bubblegum. They knew about merchandising. Where anybody ever got the idea of making multi-brands out of a single platform, another moron. So a conspiracy of morons is what it takes to ruin a car company. And all of it is due to a lack of ability to remember what they did in the 60s. Because if you're going to have any customers at all, you have to give them something that he can be fiercely loyal about. The car's got to be a good car. General Motors, you've got a long way to go before you get to where Jaguar is on branding.